Let's talk with DJ Cappuccino. Uh, serving in government uh, uh, structures, uh, first as an MPL, member of provincial legislature in 1994, um, it's a privilege and an honor. That's what we must understand. Mm. Because you don't apply to be a member of legislature or member of parliament. No, no, no. You know, it's, it's not kingship mm -mm. where you are born uh, uh, into that institution. Mm. Because within kingship, uh, you ascend because of... It could have been far. But I want to, to, to also get you. I think you have sat in many higher chairs uh, with very influential people who take decisions for this country. Look at Mitsamili Mirin, Mara. Dr. Budjo. Mirin, look at Mitsamili. Gurmara, a country where are we taking it forward? We are not in power by default. We are in power because we represent the aspirations of Africans. Mm. How do you want to come to parliament and talk about load shedding when you don't even have a metric? Because there, there are many students outside who have got masters who are unemployed and they can be better parliamentarian than somebody who does not even have a JC. They are frustrated. They are starting podcasts now. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Need to refresh and unwind? Come to Wild Things at Meropa Casino and Conference Center where you get to enjoy quad bags, swimming pools, water park, restaurants, kids games, reptile park, camping, birds park, and many other activities. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Today, I know many people know him as Budjo. This is going to change today. We are having Dr. Mkachane Joseph Maswangani who is a South African politician who has been involved in various roles within government and the African National Congress Party. Recently, he has served as the Minister of Transport in South Africa. He has held several other positions within the ANC, including being a member of the National Executive Committee and also Provincial Executive Committee member of the ANC. Mr. Maswangani, sorry, Dr. Maswangani, I had to actually stress that because many people will still struggle with that career has been intertwined with politics and governance in South Africa, particularly within the ANC structures. He holds a bachelor's degree, Bachelor of Arts from UNISA. He holds a master's degree in governance. He holds a political transformation master's degree also from Free State University. And um, did I read them right? I think, Prof, will, you'll, you'll actually cut them right. He holds a Bachelor of Arts from UNISA, Master's degree in governance and political transformation from University of Free State. Second master's degree in political science from UNIVEN. And recently, as in yesterday, a PhD in political science, UNIVEN. Welcome to Just Talk with DJ Capuchin. How am I okay? Okay, and some uh, And also to the viewers out there, uh, th thanks very much for inviting me. But uh, feel free to... Call me whatever is comfortable. Yeah. Because I don't want people uh, not to relate with me because every time they must call me a doctor. Yeah. They can't say Comrade Joe. Those who are used to Comrade Joe. Yeah. Those who are used to Bo Joe. Yeah. They should continue to do so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true indeed. I think um, uh, personally as an academic, I will try to call you Dr. Joe. Uh, uh, but with you, how do you call me Dr. Joe? Because you are my younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I don't carry titles when I get home. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It, it means even my children must now call me. Kata wa na kukwad. Babu, hey, Joe. Yes. Kanale. I'm the child when I'm at home. I'm yes. the brother, I'm uh, uh, uncle. So they must continue to call me in that man. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I would love us to go back, a little bit back. We are, um, where the foundation started, especially with regard to if there are some fondest memories when you were that little boy, but particularly to understand what influenced you to, to join politics or to be politically conscious. Um, it started at uh, high school, uh, 1986, while I were doing metric. Uh, it was at that year that uh, uh, the politics in South Africa uh, went to the higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, student activism, uh, uh, youth activism throughout the country. Uh, uh, Oliver Tambo, 
has made a call to young people uh, to make apartheid mm. and South Africa ungovernable. Uh, leaders like Peter Mukawa rose to the uh, occasion and uh, led uh, young people uh, mm. during that era. Then uh, we, uh, by then, were inspired and uh, started to uh, establish an SRC at the uh, uh, secondary where I was, mm. uh, uh, Daula village, Malamlele, Collins Chawan municipality today. Um, we were seriously harassed by the then Gazankulu police. Mm. Uh, they descended to our school, uh, closed the school, I think almost a month or so, uh, established a camp outside there, and uh, uh, students were terrorized, uh, uh, bitterly so, uh, uh, arrested. And then from there, uh, I proceeded to teach for a year. And then uh, 1988, went to the Bumbeni College, where I became more active mm. uh, uh, as a member of a youth congress in then village, where the Bumbeni is, and a member of a South African National Student Congress uh, by then uh, as a student. And then uh, when the ANC was unbanned in 1990, mm. we officially became members of the, of the ANC. Uh, uh, and also the Youth League. Mm. But during that time, as I've said, we were also active in the South African Youth Congress, which was led by Peter Mkang. I'm not sure if you can still recall, because I know that I personally grew up in a homeland, Muputatuan, and they had brutal measures, the police. Uh, they would get police from Freiburg, Guruman, and all those places to come to Amaskral area. And those police didn't care. They would beat the hell out of you. So I'm not sure about how Gazangulu government, but I can imagine how brutal the system was. If you can still recall, or if you still have some examples of what happened to you or some of your comrades. As I've said, in 1986, uh, when we went on strike at the high school, <coughs> uh, the police descended. Kazankulu police, yeah. led by the then police commissioner in today's language, or the chief of police, uh, uh, and the top management uh, came to our uh, secondary school, mm. uh, arrested uh, many students there, and uh, 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 brutalized. Uh, you you managed to run away? Yes, we had to run away. <laughs> um, um, and then um, uh, many were also arrested. Uh, also, when I was at the college, uh, the Gazankulu and the SAPS police were very, very brutal. I remember they killed uh, some young people uh, at the garage uh, uh, in Kong mm. uh, when we went on strike. Uh, and the SAPS, uh, in particular, uh, the security branch uh, from the then Zanini, mm. uh, which was a central government, uh, arrested most of the students uh, at the Tubumbeni where we were. Uh, our college was closed. Uh, we were always at loggerheads with the, with the police because we were fighting uh, the apartheid system. Mm -hmm. uh, so the homelands were just an appendage of uh, the brutal uh, system of apartheid conducted uh, from Pretoria. And I can imagine that nothing was reported about those deaths, those killings especially the propaganda at that time? Uh, there were progressive uh, publications mm. uh, like uh, The New Nation. Uh, uh, it was a New Nation newspaper uh, run by people like uh, Comrade uh, Zuleke Sisulu, uh, the son of the, the late leader of the ANC, Tate Walter Sisulu. Mm. Uh, there was a SASPU, which was run by uh, SASCO. It was a publication. Uh, there were publications uh, from the unions and international. There were progressive uh, mm. publications which published uh, all uh, these uh, stories. And remember by then, Radio Freedom uh, broadcasting from Zambia mm. uh, and other uh, uh, underground publications. The message would go. The message would go all out there. Mm. Uh, so apartheid was not able to suppress uh, all those stories. They tried... Uh, through not publishing them uh, uh, in the mainstream media, 
um, newspapers that they were owning and the SABC. But there was an alternative uh, media to publish those uh, stories. No, 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 I get it. So fast forward, then we move to you playing a role in provincial politics at a senior level. Um, if, if you can take us through the journey. Uh, as I've said, when I was at school, SRC at the Wumbeni, SRC again, a leader of uh, SANSCO, uh, also participating in the South African Youth Congress uh, in, in, at Dan Village and Kwankowa, and uh, uh, also ANC when ANC was uh, unbanned. Mm. Uh, when I uh, uh, graduated, Yes. Uh, I became a member of uh, SATU. Uh, by then, it was not SATU. Uh, there was a new uh, uh, Far Northern Transvaal Teachers uh, uh, Congress, uh, which led to the formation of uh, what we call uh, SATU uh, today. In uh, 1991, I was uh, 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 amongst those who were appointed to serve in what we used to call the provisional uh, uh, regional youth uh, committee. It yeah. was an interim uh, youth committee to re-establish the ANC Youth League in the country. That's after the unbanning, right? Yes, that yes. was after the unbanning. Hmm. Uh, we're operating from here in uh, Pulukwan, uh, which led to the uh, re-establishment of the Youth League uh, at uh, Siabuswa, uh, December 1991. Mm. where Peter Mkaba was elected uh, the first president uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, and then uh, Rapu Mlekana, the secretary general. Uh, from there, I was officially elected uh, in the, at the provincial level. Provinces were called regions at that mm. stage, mm. and then served in the structure of the ANC Youth League in the province until 1998, when I was the provincial uh, chairperson. Then in 1998, I was elected uh, the deputy president uh, of the ANC Youth League in the country, mm -hmm. uh, served until 2001 when I, I was uh, above age, uh, youth age. And then I was elected into the ANC uh, PEC of uh, Northern Transvaal uh, and, uh, before uh, it was uh, uh, Limpopo. Mm. And then uh, it was initially it was Northern Transvaal, Northern Province, then uh, Limpopo. So I've been in the PEC uh, from that time, uh, 2002 until uh, uh, 2014. Uh, in between, uh, no, no, until 2017. In between, there was a, a break. Mm. Uh, from there, 2017, I was elected uh, a National Executive Committee member, uh, re elected in 2022. Uh, uh, in the National Executive uh, at uh, NASREC uh, conference. Uh, those are some of my political activities yeah, uh, within yeah. the ANC and its uh, uh, structures. Of course, I served in various positions in government. Because when I checked um, uh, doing research with my producer, there's so many things that we realized that if we mention them, we're not going to finish. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's amazing how you you start to learn about those things when you are researching and you get so shocked that this person has been working. Mm. But uh, it's like many people don't know, you see. Mm. So it, it, it was just a shock that we, we, we've actually encountered. But also because you've held various uh, positions in the NC and the government, what have been the most rewarding aspects of your roles and also the most challenging that you have encountered? Uh, serving in government uh, uh, structures, uh, first as an MPL, Member of Provincial Legislature in 1994, um, is a privilege and an honor. That's what we must understand. Mm. Because you don't apply to be a member of legislature or member of parliament. Mm. The ANC deploys you mm. uh, for reasons known to the ANC. Uh, uh, and we regard that as a privilege. Mm. It's not an entitlement uh, 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 where uh, sometimes you think the ANC owes you. The ANC doesn't owe anybody anything. Mm. Mm. It is us who owe the ANC the service 
to the people of South Africa. I find that very powerful because what you're saying is that uh, you are nominated by branches. Yes. Uh, then you get to be accepted in a structure. And the NC now decides that this is where you're going to place the comrade. I think many of the comrades, if they can have that in mind and not forget that, wouldn't be hearing most of the stories that we are hearing right now. Honestly, and I also think that we would have advanced uh, the course of the NC in terms of service delivery, also assisting the people of South Africa. So I'm noting that it's a very key thing that many comrades forget that positionally I can win. No, no, no. You know, it's, it's not kingship mm -mm. where you are born uh, uh, into that institution. Mm. Because within kingship, uh, you ascend because of heredity. Mm. Uh, there's a hereditary position. Then you are entitled because your father was a king, your father was a senior traditional leader or a headman. Mm. But here, yeah, it's branches. Ukumberuil. Yes, ukumberuil, ukutana, utaseva. And when the time comes that branches don't feel that you have to continue saving. Don't be Ac angry and start your part. No. <laughs> Accept and do other things. Mm. And so like, for instance, we are in the academic uh, space. Mm. I can apply to go and teach uh, at the TVET or uh, any other institution or a university mm. because these are my qualifications. Mm. I've shared for them. And uh, if I apply, uh, really, the university will see a value in me to appoint me uh, either on a, a, a temporary basis or a full-time basis as mm. a lecturer mm. or do other things, uh, conduct research and uh, uh, do many other things in society to us. Because what this degree is all about is solving the problems of society. And you know, I, 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 in my preparations, I have a section on this education. And one of the first questions is, you know, how did you balance your hectic political life? Uh, uh, many other things. Maybe I would assume that maybe you are also in business. Uh, how did you juggle it? Remember, you are an adult. You are a parent. Yes. There's so many things. Because I always say I respect people who can still manage to get a qualification. And they are senior years with commitments, whether it's work, whether it's what. It takes sacrifice. Yes. So how did you balance? And uh, I mean, for instance, ANC work is not a child's play, no. especially where you are deployed. It is not a child's play. How did you juggle around? <coughs> Sorry. Um, it needs determination uh, and hard work. Mm. There's nothing that can substitute uh, hard work. Uh, you have to be determined to say, I want to achieve this uh, 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 degree. Mm. Um, you have to study very hard. Mm. You can't just walk into the university and say, I want a master's uh, because I'm a member of parliament. Things uh, work differently then. No, these universities are regulated. Mm. So you have to manage the time that you have. I'm a member of parliament and a chairperson of a committee. Mm. But when I go back to the compound where we stay, uh, residence where we stay in Cape Town, Mm. I have to allocate every evening uh, two hours plus mm. uh, to study. Uh, during the day, while I'm at the uh, parliament, mm. uh, between the time when I'm out of the committee meeting and when we have to go to the assembly, I make a turn at the, at the library. Parliament has got a very big library with so many books and access to the latest uh, technology to access sources. Uh, when I'm back home here, uh, after family issues in the evening mm. or during the day, I create two or three hours uh, study. When I'm flying uh, between Cape Town and uh, O.R. Tambo, mm. that two hours... You peruse something. I, I spend uh, uh, studying. Uh, I finish uh, two chapters or so. So you mm. have to find space and not give uh, uh, excuses uh, why you can't start. You don't have to be full-time. I can't be full-time at the university. I must be working uh, for my family and for myself. But the time that I have, I have to make sure that uh, this time is for family, uh, this is for the ANC, this is for myself, 
than this for society uh, in general. And I think many people should get inspiration from this. I will tell you that even myself, I am inspired. I mean, many guys, we always give excuses. Mm. Hey, man, keep busy. Spani, what, what? But looking at your life, and I was thinking as you explained that you dedicate an hour or two. In that process, you can't even switch off your phone. You can get a call from fellow ministers, comrades, praise that they must get you on the phone. And you yes. keep on solving problems while you are busy with your work there. And we are quick to give uh, uh, ourselves excuses and say, I, like a coward there of which I can't study. That is really, really, really commendable. You see, that is very commendable. And yeah, we are not allowed to switch off the phone. Remember the phone that I used? Uh, it's a parliamentary phone as a member of parliament. Yes. The public pays for that data. They pay for the airtime. Mm. So anytime I must be uh, uh, reachable, uh, whether by the ANC, by the speaker of parliament, or by any other member of public, my phone is on 24-7. Somebody can call and say, at 12 or at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Mr. Maswangani, I've got a problem with my grandchildren. They don't have birth certificate. Then you say, hey, oh, doc. Ah, no, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> you don't go around carrying uh, your status when people greet you. I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> so you can't dismiss that old lady who calls you at 2 o'clock mm. because she has a problem with the grandchildren who don't have birth certificate. Mm. You just have to tell her, oh, look, I'm in Pulukwana, I'm in Mdawula. The person who can assist you is so and so will take you to home affairs or social development, try to assist the children mm. to get the social grant. Uh, if there's a problem with the school, they can't get the reports, uh, link them with somebody from education department mm. or kids to get the report. So 24-7, we are accessible as yeah, a pushy. member of parliament and also as member of the NEC. Remember branches have elected me they didn't sleep to make sure that branch, those branch meetings correlate to get me elected. So if they want any access to me, I must be accessible. That's mm. what is key about being a public. Now I'm called a public representative. Once you, you take an oath in parliament, you must know what it means to be a public representative. Because you have uh, voluntarily went to parliament, voluntarily elected into the NEC. Mm. That means service to the people. And that means 24-7. So that's what is critical. Then you have to study. You have to be a father. Mm. You have to be a husband. You have to be a member of the community where you come from, a church, and all these uh, services that you have to render in society. You must create space uh, for that. So <laughs> don't give excuse in life because you don't know how long you are going to live in this world. Yes. Try to manage uh, your time and make sure that when you leave this world, you have done so much uh, for the for the society. Uh, so that's what I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do. Now that I've got this PhD, I'll spend more time uh, writing articles and writing books, mm -hmm. uh, which I want to contribute knowledge uh, to society. Because being an academic, it means you are now involved in the knowledge production industry. It's an industry where mm. we are. We produce knowledge. We can't always depend on knowledge from America and Britain. We are not in Europe. We are in Africa. We need African solutions to the problems that we are facing in this country. Hence, mm. even if you look at the topic that I've uh, has researched, which is about traditional leaders and local governance, mm. it is the situation that we find ourselves in here right now. in Africa. It's mm. not a British kingdom. We have got our own kingdoms. We have got our own traditional leaders here. They've got challenges mm. with the mm. current governance systems. And how do we resolve those challenges to make sure that there is a harmony between the traditional form of governance and the modern? Because what we have is the modern form of governance, mm. which has been brought here by uh, John van Riebig, uh, Cecil John Rhodes, and other colonialists who descended on our, our country. By the way, the, the PhD topic of Dr. Maswangani, it's about unraveling 
the contestation between traditional and modern government uh, government in South Africa. And I like it when our studies make sense yeah. uh, in this way, uh, researching realistic uh, things that affect communities. But uh, uh, I would love to understand what what exactly did you want to address? What are the, those objectives? Maybe if you can still you know give us one or two that really you wanted to tackle whenever you were dealing with this topic. Uh, the situation here, Capuchino, as I've said, all along in Africa, our governance system was traditional governance. Mm. Before colonialism, we were led by kings. We, we were not doing as we please. No, no, no. This, what we have, is Westminster system of governance. We were led by kings, Kukuni, Ngunyani, Makado, mm. uh, Hinsa, uh, Shaka, uh, uh, the Ashanti kingdom, and many other kingdoms. Funneling it down to Ohosi Mulamula. Then you will have the Ohosi below. Mm. Then you have a uh, uh, head men or head women. Then you have uh, Shamuganga. That was the hierarchy. Mm. That governance system had the powers, executive powers uh, to govern. Mm. It had judicial powers because we have had traditional court system, not the court system that we have, uh, the John van Riebeek courts. Because what we have now, we are applying the Roman Dutch English law mm. in, in Africa. We are not Dutch, we are not Romans, we are not English. We have had our own legal system. Mm. We had our own judiciary system. We have had our own parliamentary system. So what these Europeans have brought is not something new. We were not just singing in the bush. No, we were not animals. Mm. We are human beings. We have had our own civilization, the Mapungubze civilization. We melted stones and created objects out mm. of those we were doing all this. We were trading we had, in gold. We had our own uh, medicinal uh, uh, systems that we have at that time. Mm, 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 uh, uh, women uh, were there as midwives to make sure that uh, they assist. Who we were born? Uh, 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 women to give birth. Mm. We were not born in hospitals, uh, some of us. We were born in the Randavels mm. with the midwives surrounding our mothers. So, People think that uh, what is here today uh, is something that uh, has civilized us. Like, what, no. what if the wives didn't come? Like, like they're thinking we would, would have be just better been... better off without them. Of course, there are positive things that they have brought. But, but it would all... be better off without them. No, they brought us problems. They've brought us problems because today they've taken our land, which we are fighting very hard Eesh. to get it back. They didn't come with land from Europe and America. Mm. Mm. No, mm. they didn't. They found our land here, fought our kings and traditional leaders, took away the land uh, uh, and pushed back us into what we call homelands. And when we were in those homelands, those who were running the homelands government oppressed us. Mm. They were before Romani, those homelands government. Eesh. So it was, it's very painful where mm. we come from. Mm. And today, traditional leaders want a space to be part of this governance. And they are negotiating very hard where we prefer more modern uh, way of governance rather than the traditional way of governance. And people wow. still have a lot of confidence on traditional leaders. Look at when traditional leaders call for a meeting. People mm. come and go there in thousands. Mm. But if uh, we call a branch meeting of the ANC, we struggle. We have to transport people. People don't get transported when uh, uh, Osim Dabula uh, convenes a meeting uh, at uh, his koro uh, at um, Dabula. People just go. And I was listening to the manifesto of MK yesterday, and I heard uh, President Zuma talking about bringing back those traditional institutions to life because of a councillor seem to be even having more powers than a, a, a traditional leader at a village. And, and I, I found it very interesting. I don't know what's your take on that. The ANC government has done a lot 
to bring dignity back to traditional leaders. Mm. Remember, traditional leaders were used by the colonial and the apartheid system yes. to enforce law and order. That's what they were doing, to collect hard tax. There were terrible taxes in this country. Mm. There was what we call a hard tax. There was what we call a dog tax. Mm. And many, many other taxes uh, yeah. uh, that our grandparents and uh, parents were paying at that time. And, and to give a perspective, I think it will benefit our viewers. Um, at some point, when they needed labor, these capitalists, yes. they realized that our people didn't want to work. We were told we must leave our wives, leave your home, your children, go and work somewhere. Yeah. We said, why must I leave? I've got cattle. I've got, I'm leaving okay. Yes. And they thought if they tax and make it difficult for a black man to sustain himself, yeah. then the black man will leave home and come and work in Godi. In the mines. In the mines, yeah. And there were uh, recruitment companies at that time, which we call labor brokers. Mm. One of them was Teba. I remember Teba in Guiana. Yeah. You'll find a queue and people come to be collected with a bus and they go to the railway and they are shipped out of the yes, villages. Second to the mines, there was Wenela recruiting Mozambicans, uh, the Lesotho, and so on. Mm. Uh, the migrant labor system has destroyed the family fabric. Mm. Because our grandfathers and our fathers mm. will be away in the mines for a long time. Our mothers, when they had to visit them in Gauteng or wherever in the free state where there were mines, mm. uh, they were regarded as visitors. And they were given a particular time frame that within 72 hours, you must have left this place. And how do you visit your husband in those hostels? What the husband no. will do will be to hire a room mm. in a township for a particular period. Mm. Isn't it? Our fathers were staying in the uh, hostels. So they will go to the nearby uh, uh, township, uh, rent a backyard room, uh, stay with a wife for uh, some days or a month or a week. Mm. After that, because she will come there and be given a permit. Mm. The permit will be stamped on her ID, a don't pass. Oh, God. After that, when the police found her there, they were going to arrest her and give her 72 hours to leave uh, 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 Johannesburg or Pretoria or wherever. That's the brutality of uh, the apartheid system. While still enjoying even, time with Even children will not be allowed. You will only go to Gauteng uh, during uh, school vacations. You will get a school permission stamped by the principal that I uh, hereby uh, apply for this young person mm. to be there in the urban area for this school vacation, starting on this day until this day. After that vacation, you have to go back to the homeland or else they were going to arrest you. So that's the brutality of the system. And it used the traditional leaders mm. uh, to be the enforcers of uh, that draconian law. And when the ANC came in, President Mandela, because he himself was a chief, he was the son of a chief. He was in the forefront to make sure that he brings back the dignity mm. of traditional Because he saw everything. He was, he was the product of the institution. He saw how the institution, remember his family, they were stripped off of the chieftaincy mm. uh, 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 in the trans sky. Uh, he saw how the kingship of uh, Abba Tembu, because he came from the Abba Tembu, mm. was stripped. And uh, they were called a paramount chief instead of being called chief. And then King uh, uh, Sabata, Dalinwebo, the father of the current uh, king, had to go to exile and he died in exile. That's the family where... The chief himself went... Yes. Even the current king, I think, was born or he was in exile for a long time and they came back. But his father was buried there. So it was very brutal. So President Mandela... Experienced it in his own uh, family. Mm, mm, the king who was mm. Sabat Dalinab was replaced by a stooge who was compliant 
to the colonial apartheid government uh, of the day. So the ANC government established what we call the National uh, uh, Council of Traditional Leaders, mm. which today is called the National House of Traditional Leaders. And you can go into the speech when President Mandela inaugurated uh, that council. He went into detail on how traditional leaders were traumatized, how they were abused by the apartheid system, and now they can participate in the governance. Wow. And they were part of uh, CODESA. Uh, they were part of the multi-party uh, national uh, negotiating uh, uh, forum. And today you have got the houses from national until local level. They are also allowed to be members of political parties and become members of parliament in their own right. Mm. Today government has built them decent uh, offices uh, and so on and so on. So SL don't that, give them a bit of buckies and Yes, it's those we, of, call, yes. we call them uh, tools of trade. Mm. For the traditional leader to be able to drive around, around the village, around the village, attend to the challenges of water and so on, because traditional leaders are part of the current governance uh, system. So, mm. But what we are arguing in this uh, thesis yes. is that it is not enough where we want traditional leaders to participate. As you have said, the system that we have uh, gives more powers to the modern system, which is councillors, members of parliament, on the expense of traditional leaders. And it's not effective enough in addressing people's no. problems. No. Hence, in this uh, thesis, mm. I'm uh, arguing for a, a framework that will be able to harmonize uh, traditional governance and the modern That is government. part of your recommendations. Then. Yes. Yeah. Because I had to develop. Mm. Yeah, we have to bring a framework, and then the framework is there. And uh, uh, it has been uh, uh, certified mm. uh, by the University Higher Degrees uh, Committee uh, and given a stamp uh, by the Vice Chancellor and the Chancellor of the University. So you have to go through a rigorous uh, process mm. for the thesis to be accepted. Mm. That's what PhD is all about. Yes. What knowledge are you, you bringing? bringing? You don't New just knowledge. have to. You do that in literature review. Talk about so uh, cappuccino. According to Cappuccino, this and that, uh, there are instruments to make sure that uh, it meets the test. Uh, uh, so it must do the test of time. So that even if it is published, people can see that uh, indeed uh, this thesis has brought something that maybe we have never thought of, but scientifically, this is what uh, 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 the student is recommending to society uh, to indeed. resolve the problem. Public representatives must really, really uh, uh, be friendly to books, honestly. Because as you are telling me, I can imagine when you start to put across uh, with your fellow comrades that maybe there's a policy yes. that we need to start to push with regard to the framework that can harmonize traditional leadership. And we haven't done, and now you substantiate it with uh, uh, enough literature. Yes. Th that is. Imagine if we had three or four or five of you or maybe hundred of you, what we were going to do. We we're going to do wonders. You see. Education is very important. You can't substitute education in Kabashin. Mm. You can't substitute knowledge. Mm. Uh, more especially at the era in which we find ourselves. We live in an era of a knowledge economy. Yes. We can't be getting... Uh, uh, artificial intelligence from America, uh, all these technological gadgets that we have must be coming from China, America, Japan. Mm. We, we are not a dumping ground as Africa. Mm. As Africa, as I've said, long before colonialists came, we had our knowledge system. And we must continue to do so and compete with other countries and other continents. South Africa, I mean, Africa should not be looked as a market Mm. Uh, for computers produced at Silicon Valley and so on. We must have our own Silicon Valley. I'm glad that I saw in uh, 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 Uganda uh, they are producing their own buses. I saw in uh, Nigeria they are now producing cars. Uh, so Africa uh, is rising. And there is a lot that is happening uh, out there. In Af Sometimes people who don't travel to this continent People think uh, Africa out there is like a backyard. People live with animals in the cities. Mm. 
Mm. You must go to big cities like Cairo. It's like any other city in Europe. Mm. Go to, uh, 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 what is this city in Tanzania? Uh, Dar es Salaam. Salaam. Uh, highly developed uh, Go to city. Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. Be shocked. Uh, you go and see the airport that they are building there. They mm. are building a hub uh, of State where of the art. Uh, all the airlines are going to uh, uh, converge uh, at uh, uh, Addis Ababa. Uh, there are big cities out there. So many people think Africa is backward and it needs aid from outside there. No, no, no. The fastest growing economies today are found amongst other regions. Uh, in Africa. Africa is very rich in terms of mineral resources and other raw products. What we are saying is that as Africans, let's beneficiate, let's add value to the products that we are producing. Not take gold to Europe and then they bring back in the form of jewelry or whatever products. Uh, take cocoa and other things. Take it to Belgium. Bring back in the form of chocolate. Can't we make our own chocolate? Uh, and jewelry as Africans. We can, because in Mapungubze, they were melting gold. We have got the gold which is there at the University of Pretoria from Mapungubze mm. with the rhinoceros and many other golden products. Before the emergence of vet veterans, gold, no, no, we were no. dealing with gold. These colonialists were not there. So mm. they made us to think that they are superior to us with the type of education that they are pumping into our head mm. and think that a, a white person is... We study with uh, Europeans or whites today uh, in, in universities mm. and we, 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 we perform. Uh, no, we, 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 we move them very that. hard. We move them very hard. Yes. And I think uh, even the issue of segregation was based on the fact that we are going to expose. The reason they didn't want us to compete with whites, whether it's sports, whether going to the same schools, Yes. It is because we are going to expose them. Some yeah. of us, when we went to tertiary, we couldn't even express ourselves very well in English and all that. But after a maths test, a lecturer would ask, who is Mashwanganyani? Yeah. Then, it's me, ma'am, it's me. Yeah. Good. How did you get 100%? You can't even explain it, but you understand it very well. So, uh, I support what you are saying, that it is not like they brought miracles no. Uh, here. Uh, uh, and even if we need to, to, to debate it, we could have been far. But I want to, to, to also get you, I think you have sat in many higher chairs uh, with very influential people who take decisions for this country. Look at me, Mary, Dr. Burjo, Mary, look at me, Gurmara, a country where are we taking it forward? Uh, the ANC, which is the party that I belong to, because uh, I'm a politician, uh, has got the plan. Mm. Uh, we have got the uh, uh, 2030 uh, plan uh, driven by the National uh, Policy, I mean, uh, uh, Planning Commission, uh, uh, the NDP, yes. which is having clear targets that this is what we should have achieved by 2030. There are challenges that can make us not to achieve certain targets. Uh, Kampachino, this country comes from a very terrible background. I was born uh, 58 years ago. Uh, when I passed matric uh, then, I have been admitted at the University of the North at that time. I had a letter. Yeah. I went there. Then they said, but will you be able to afford the tuition fee, the boarding fee? Mm. My parents could not afford. So I could not proceed with my studies mm. at the university. At that time, I had to go and look for employment. Uh, one uh, principal by then assisted me to be an unqualified teacher. Mm. Went back to the Bumbeni and worked myself up. Today, somebody from my own village yes. can access UCT. UCT was far fetched from us. Never thought, oh, you'd never, no. UCT, Vets, Telembosch, no. never uh, in your wildest dreams. No, even Teflop was not accessible. <laughs> because there were no bazaaries unless you were connected to some homeland leaders. Mm. You will be fortunate if you get bazaaries from the South African Institute of Race Relations and progressive churches 
uh, like uh, the South African Council of Churches and so on. Uh, but today there is NESFAS, which is spending 100 billion or so to make sure that children of the working class have access to education. Mm -hmm. Today, kids at primary and secondary school, they are able to get school nutrition. It was not there. Today, we have got what we call free uh, uh, schools where we don't pay for uh, uh, school fees. These kids have iPods. Yes. This is iPads. They, they have got so many. So a lot has been achieved. Mm -hmm. There is social grant for somebody from zero uh, to 18 no one, very few uh, kids today go to bed uh, hungry. Unless me as a parent uh, take the child's money and use it to, to play Michaina and other things. Mm. But every child today must have access to education, must have access to social grant, uh, going to university, have access to NESFAS. These things were not there. At all. At all. Let alone political power mm. that we have. So people, when they talk, they talk as if we are still in 1993. South Africa was not like this. Pulukwana, where we are now, mm. where we are broadcasting from now, was not like this. This Murupa was not here. The development that you see, whether more of the north, uh, Savannah, uh, Star Park, all these suburbs, they were not there. It was two streets yeah. owned by white people. Yeah, it was Landros Mare. And uh, Market Street, mm. uh, one way, this way, the other and way. the other this one, way. that's it. But today, Pulukwana is a different town. You go to Tondo, those big malls were not there. And, you go uh, to, you know what is called Midrand. You know Midrand is a modern city. There was nothing like Midrand. It was a farm. It was a farm with, uh, 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 what is that bank? DBSA mm. at that time. Then the town was that side of Halfway House. It was called Halfway House. But because mm. of the ANC government, today we have got what we call Midrand and many other cities. That Waterfalls now. Yes. Yeah. So people, when they criticize, they must know where we come from mm. and not think that you can bring miracles. There were only 18, 8 million or so people who were working. Today there are 16 million. We still have challenges of youth unemployment. But the ANC says we'll create eight, uh, 2 million job opportunities and many other programs that President Ramaphosa is leading to make sure that, that young people get opportunities. The YES program, uh, and many uh, there was nothing like internship and learnership in, in the apartheid. You know, I was even saying the at a time that the ANC is now an enemy of its progress. The very same middle class it has produced, yes, who are now in the places that you are mentioning, are saying these people are not doing anything for us forgetting where they come from. Uh, 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 but also, I think there are also mishaps and things are not going accordingly. I think we have to accept that uh, it is not like everything was done well, uh, especially from your side. But what I want to ask you is, uh, and acknowledging that ANC has played a pivotal role in South African history and yes. democracy, but how do you envision the party's future trajectory? How do you... Uh, particularly in the light of changing social dynamics <coughs> and political landscape. How do you see this ANC of ours? Uh, 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 I'm saying it because of every black person, ANC was our ANC, or it still is. How do you view it and see it, especially in the coming 20, 30 years? Um, there's no other part which can better govern this country than the ANC. I'm not saying that because I'm the leader and the member of the ANC. Mm. The ANC has got 112 years so being established. It's not a baby. Mm. Uh, it has got international exposure. Even before we went to negotiations, the ANC had a document, mm. a Harare Declaration. We knew what we were going to uh, uh, negotiate in the constitutional uh, negotiations. We were ready when our leadership was uh, uh, released from exile, 1989, 1990, 1991. We had a document which Oliver Tambo has developed as a president in Harare, called the Harare Declaration. 
Even when the ANC took over government, it had a document called Ready to Govern. You can look at it. Already produced by the ANC. Yes. So we are not in power by default. We are in power because we represent the aspirations of Africans, mm. Mm. in particular, and uh, and uh, blacks uh, in general. So the ANC has a track record of fighting for liberation. It has a track record of liberating this country and govern this country. Mm. There are challenges, and we acknowledge them. If you remember President uh, uh, Ramaphosa last year, October, when he was presenting the manifesto review mm. uh, at Dobsonville, he said, this is what the ANC has achieved, but we have also had shortcomings, and these are the shortcomings. What more do you want when I say, I have committed a mistake and I'm sorry, and now we have developed a manifesto, and mm. said, this is how we are going to bring back the land. We have done this in terms of land restitution, mm. uh, land reform and uh, redistribution, and moving forward in the next uh, so many years, 30% must be back and so on and so on. We have got clear, achievable targets in the, in the manifesto. Mm. And we have done a lot. University of Pretoria today, the way it is, I think majority of students today are blacks. But where was the University of Pretoria? You will not go there. Even first Cappuccino and say, Emina Cappuccino, Wakamasonga, in Langana Pretoria. We felt unwelcomed in the early 90s. They were 95. going to moor you. Uh, no, they moored us. Yes. Literally, they moored us. Yes. You yeah. will not go to Stellenbosch and say you want to study at Stellenbosch. Where is Stellenbosch University today? Let's acknowledge where mm. we come from mm. and mm. say, these are the challenges. The main challenge that we have today is youth unemployment. And we have to find a solution. And if you look at the ANC manifesto, it mm. says this is how, as the state, we are going to create job opportunities. This is how we also want the private sector, which is benefiting from the state. Mm. Because not less than 950 billion is spent on procurement in South Africa. And the majority of those who still benefit private are private companies, which are white companies. Hence, last week, Thursday, the ANC government has passed a public procurement bill mm. to make sure that black companies benefit. Last yes. Week, yes. Last week, President uh, Ramaphosa has signed the National Health Insurance Bill so that mm. health should not be the privilege of the haves. For and, everyone. Yes, the, the, the poor must have to the access to the sophisticated uh, health system in the in the public sector. Mm. So a lot has, is being done today. The the workers say, "Look, uh, we we don't have money since COVID. We have had lots of challenges. Please pass the bill as Parliament, what we call the two pot system, so that they are able to withdraw from their own pensions." That bill, the uh, pension fund amendment bill, mm. was passed last week. The Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill was passed last week, Thursday. Nah. So, a lot is being done. And those who talk too much are formerly those of the ANC. Why is it that they didn't do that when they were here? What miracle are they going to do? <laughs> Some of them <laughs> are given opportunities in municipalities. They mess up those municipalities. Yo, you can go to Egurulain. Mm. And see what another party has done when it was given an opportunity. And who's run. leading there? Now it's a coalition. We have got coalition of the ANC and the EFF. Before that, it was the EFF. There mm. are many challenges sure. which we have uh, got by that time. Mm. So there's no better party that can lead. Western Cape, where there's the DA, I'm based in the Western Cape most mm. of the time. Go to a place called Nomzam in the Strand. Mm. It's sewer in the street. Go to Guguleitu, a township at the, behind the airport. Mm. It's so filthy. Crime is very high in the Western Cape. Mzoli had to close. Yes. Mm. Somebody was killed for extortion. The gangs are in the running of uh, townships. You go to Michel's Plains. It's very difficult to access Michel's Plain because the gangs are running Michel's Plain. So what governance is the DA 
uh, talking about because we can see, look at uh, Chuan, Pretoria today. It's very filthy. You get into Sochangube, you come from there, my brother, well, you know Pretoria better than me. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. When you get into Sochangube, is it the R81 road? You are, you are welcomed by the spilling sewer. It was not there before when the ANC was in charge. So this thing that the DA governs better, the DA governs terribly so in Tuane and in Cape Town. They only care about the section of their people. Somewhere. When you go to Cape Town, they only care about the Camps Bay. Uh, they only care about uh, the Bishop's Court mm. uh, and all Michel's those. Michel's Plain, uh, all is, those places. It's terrible. So when you go to the colored and the uh, African townships, the services are terrible. So there's no other party that can lead more than what the ANC is doing. Today, there's better life. Go and see what's happening in Guiani, in Malamlele, where is my township, that's the municipality where I come from. A lot has changed in that area uh, since uh, 1994. And many other towns here in Limpopo and South Africa in general. The facts speak for themselves. I would love us to go a little bit inside the ANC. Uh, uh, you've been involved in ANC structures and including the national and executive, obviously, even provincial executive committees. But how important do you think internal party dynamics are shaping the broader political outcomes of policy direction? This thing here, this, these factions we always see, uh, 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 this uh, 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 in the middle of the night uh, uh, because of allegedly factions, then a minister is recalled there uh, uh, because it's assumed it's no longer, it's not with us. Uh, this is a Zuma person. Uh, this is a what, what. Don't you think those particular politics have delayed the ANC? Um, there will always be uh, intra-party challenges. Where there are human beings, uh, there are always challenges. Mm. Uh, but that does not mean that there's a crisis. Uh, the president of the republic or the prime minister, where it is that system where the prime minister is the head of government, mm. has the prerogative to appoint uh, uh, people into the executive and has got the prerogative uh, to release them from that uh, executive. Mm. Uh, so that's what we have to understand. Uh, 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 the ANC makes it very clear that we have challenges. Hence, in this NEC uh, uh, term, yes. President Ramaphosa talks of what we call uh, the renewal, that we are not going to uh, uh, accept uh, corruption. Mm. Uh, we want uh, members who want to be members of uh, parliament, uh, uh, councils, to have a basic education. Yeah. They say you must have metric. So if you don't have a metric and they don't, uh, the ANC does not accept you to be a councillor or a member of parliament, where's the problem? Because that is the decision of the national conference mm. and the national executive. Which is still committee. too modest for now. I think in the near future, it must be a diploma or a degree. How do you want to come to parliament and talk about load shedding when you don't even have a metric? Because there we talk megawatts, kilowatts. Will you understand... The difference be between, a kilo, uh, between a megawatt and a kilowatt, <whistles> a KVA. So, ESCOM will come and present and say, we've got this KVA here, we've got this megawatt, we've got this. And then the member of parliament does not understand anything. The role will be, yeah. we need someone who can boo harder. You must hold ESCOM accountable, but you must understand all those technical issues that ESCOM is facing. Hmm. You, you, you get the point. Yeah. So if you don't have a metric, will you define what is a megawatt? You can't. I can't even define it. Yes. Yeah. So it needs somebody who has got a basic education to hold ESCOM, uh, Mintech, and all this uh, uh, accountable. So over the years, how was it working with such people without metric and without basic understanding of concepts? How did you navigate that? The ANC takes people for training. The ANC has got a political education platforms. We have got the OR Tambo Institute and many other platforms. Mm. And many of our people have learned through uh, the struggle. And you noted without metric is too difficult. 
so we, we have we have evolved through the struggle to understand the basics of governance. Mm. But that era and that generation is passing. We, yeah. we must now get into. We are in the 21st century. Yeah. We, we are no longer in that century when by then you will understand that even if people didn't have metric, it wouldn't be a problem. Because Look at how you developed yourself. All yeah. your educational qualifications, you got them after 1994. All of them. Pushing until PhD level. I mean, two master's degrees. It's a dream. And, and there are people who've been sitting. They've been sitting, literally sitting, and then waiting to be in those structures. And some have been in those structures for many years. I think it's a good call. How do you see it in Parliament and in the nine legislatures? Mm -hmm. There is a buzzer scheme. For parliamentarians? This PhD was paid for by Parliament. And they're not studying? 100%. Tomorrow, <laughs> the, tomorrow is what date? Is it the 20th? I must submit a report. The, the report to Parliament. The certificate that I got on Friday. What they did, what the parliament did with their money, they want yes, to see it. Yes, they want to audit. Tomorrow I'm submitting it on the 20th of May and say, Speaker, this is what I have done with the money that the public has paid for me. My two masters were paid for by uh, government. Hey, I did. Parliament just, for, yes. just to start. Huh? Why should somebody be a member of parliament for five years and not start? Councillors. They are paid for by Salga and by the municipalities where they are. Why are they not studying? Tonol. Why? Because they have got many opportunities. Government pays for hundred percent. It has got programs so with investors like Vets, Univen, Teflop, uh, Johannesburg, uh, governance programs, University of the Free State, UWC. All these universities in South Africa have got governance courses, TUT, and government. Pays for councillors, pays for members of legislature, pays for Anna. parliamentarians, even for administrators. Your so way. what excuse do you have on, of not going to school when you are a councillor or a member of parliament? Then after five years, you think the ANC uh, has got a, a, an obligation to take you back to parliament when you Without don't have metric. a metric. Ah, oh, well, it can't be. There are many students outside who have got masters who are unemployed and they can be better parliamentarian than somebody who does not even have a JC. They are frustrated. They are starting podcasts now. Yes. Us. We, it's tough. Yeah. And somebody With who doesn't have a metric is creating a problem for the ANC. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't even have a JC. Do you if, know what's a JC? A JC is what in the olden days used to be called the junior certificate. There was a JC. In the olden days, there was a certificate for standard six. Then a certificate for standard eight. Your then man. a certificate for standard 10, which is a, a grade 12 today. These people can't even show us a JC certificate. So, but they are making too much noise for the ANC when there are people who are highly qualified out there mm. who mm. can be better parliamentarians and be better councillors. No, it can't be accepted. The ANC is renewing itself and people have to pull up their socks to make sure that they are up to the task. That's what is important. Because we are saving a sophisticated society today. It's yeah. no longer how things were in 1994. And it's, it's, it's not even stationary. It is moving at a very fast pace. People are getting developed. Uh, it's getting different, uh, different now, you know, yes. uh, than before. It's just moving and moving and moving. So the quality of the people you are leading, it must also go with the quality of the leaders. How have. do we deploy you to go and address the students there? You know, UCT is next to Parliament. Uh, there is a problem of uh, students maybe uh, on strike. Mm. Or the students say, we want to be addressed about NHI. Yeah. Can you explain this NHI to us? Can you unpack NHI if uh, you are not You can't. You will not understand it. That's you why some will say, oh, we want because, health, we want health. Yeah. You don't go there and sing slogans, uh, the whole session, public lecture. You must go there and explain to students what is NHI all about, what is NESFAS all about, how are they going to benefit as students at UCT 
or at the uh, University of Lipopo. <laughs> so that's what education is all about. So you fuse education into politics to make sure that you become an effective uh, public uh, representative. We are facing serious challenges as society, and we must resolve these problems of uh, unemployment. Come with you with innovations. How can we deal with the challenges that are facing young people today? That's what is important. We don't want somebody who will come and warm the benches in Cape Town, uh, in the legislature, and in the municipality. Can't wait to go to Cubana every Friday. Uh, yeah, you are not there to earn money and spend it on liquor. You are there to earn, but make sure that you plow back uh, to, the, to the society that you are saving. That's what is critical. So when we are improving ourselves in this way, educationally, mm. we want to be better public representatives. We want to be better members of the society to resolve the challenges that society find itself in now. And wow. we believe with the leadership of President Ramaphosa, mm. we are going to resolve uh, the challenges that we are having. We have the manifesto. Uh, all these other parties uh, look at the ANC manifesto uh, either criticize it or say things which they can't do because they don't have a proven uh, track record. Mm. Some parties have never even gone to conference. After these elections, they are going to fight when they go to the first uh, conference. They just have wish lists as, other as, parties as are, manifestos. Yes, other parties are owned by individuals. They are family parties. You can be removed uh, any time. In the ANC, President Ramaphosa can't just say, I'm removing you. Which ones? You have to go through a, what you call due process. Which parties? Uh, you know where people are just removed overnight. I don't have to mention them. Uh, they don't know. have systems. No, no, <laughs> but no. they say they can lead the country. Mm. I know because I serve in parliament. Mm. We go on recess. When you come back, you find five members of parliament are no longer there. You say, hey, colleague, what happened to the colleagues? Where you say, ah, they were taken out because of one, two, three. And the same applies in many municipalities. Amar DA is wrong. Why is it doing that? No, no, we are not mentioning whether it's DA or Zmang, but we know we have got colleagues who are running parties, running them like as if they are running spaza shops. ANC is not run like a spaza shop. It has got systems, even legal system. Mm. If we have to remove you, Capuchino, as a member of parliament, we go through a, what we call a due process that can be tested in mm. a court of law. And also in society, we must be seen to be fair to you. We don't just willy-nilly just remove you because we don't like you. ANC does not do things in that way. It has got capable systems which are also credible. Mm. That's what is critical about running a, a governing party. So these other ones, they are fighting to get a particular percentage, thinking that the ANC will go into coalition. There will be no coalition after the 29th. It's the ANC, outright majority. ANC is going to get uh, 50 plus and we're going to run the country ourselves. But mm. opposition must be there. Uh, 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 we, we, we are a multi-party kind of uh, a democracy. So people must not prepare themselves that they are going to give us votes and uh, or seats and then they are going to negotiate positions. Uh, we want the Ministry of Defense or Finance we are not there yet. You will be alone there deciding. The ANC is going to govern the country and it has got the plan mm. uh, to run the country. Yeah. Um, comrade, both Dr. Joe, I think you're going to be friends of this podcast to share your wisdom, also even on specialized fields. Uh, uh, it, it's really nice to listen to you. Uh, according to my preparations, you have only even covered 10%. There's okay. a lot of things that we must cover. Yeah. But the last part in short is just looking ahead. What are your aspirations and goals in the future? Uh, uh, personally and professionally. You know, uh, what did you want to go? Consulting, academia, do you want to go full time? Like, what is it that you would love to see yourself like if you occupy that, you'll be retiring as a happy man? Um, I can't be a member of parliament forever. There are younger people who must come, and I'm getting older uh, mm. every day. Mm. Uh, at some stage, I must exit uh, yeah. Parliament. Yeah. And younger people with fresh mind. And metric. Uh, metric plus, yeah. yes, come to Parliament. So uh, when I retire, 
Uh, I, I want to be self-employed. Uh, I, I don't want to be a burden to the ANC. Yeah. That, yeah, I'm no longer a member of parliament. Uh, do something for me. The ANC has done a lot for me mm. uh, to be where I am. Yes. But I want to be in a space where I'm also going to create jobs. That's what I want. That's powerful. I want to be in a space where I'm going to be writing. I want to write books mm. and uh, papers. Yeah. I want the legacy beyond my lifetime. I mm. won't live in this world forever. Mm. I must exit. This Is there peace in your farm to uh, write? Uh, it's not about farming. <laughs> I will announce at the right time what <laughs> I want to do. Uh, uh, but uh, I want to create jobs. Young yeah, people don't have jobs. And Great. I think if uh, uh, given space and time, I want to play that role uh, at that space. Mm -hmm. But I also want to write books about issues of traditional leadership, about the history of uh, Africa, South Africa, and where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to live beyond uh, the space where I am as a human being. Mm -hmm. I want to be remembered even beyond my lifetime. Uh, in this uh, planet. Wow. So that's wow. very important uh, for me uh, as, a, as a Joe Maswangai and mm. as, a, as a human being, contribute to knowledge and contribute uh, economically uh, to, uh, to society. To the viewers yeah. of Just Talk with DJ Capacino, I think we are blessed to see a fellow South African who thinks this way, who has achieved uh, the thing that he has achieved. I think we can learn a lot from Dr. Joe Maswangani. And I want to say we are honored to have you in this podcast. Uh, they still regard us as uh, people who are new, but when we called, you didn't hesitate. You were like, you will just find a suitable day to come. And we really appreciate to be sitting with you. And I think you have shared with us really, really good gems that we need to take. Also in terms of that can shape our attitude toward things and also even the understanding. And we wish you all the best in your journey. Uh, uh, thanks very much for affording me this uh, podcast uh, platform. Uh, it's a new innovation. We are used to going to the radio studios mm -hmm. uh, as belonging to that generation. Given 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, but advice. today mm. uh, you as young people has brought this kind of innovation, mm. and uh, it must be supported. And we can push for another two hours if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I must go to Kauteng for, yeah. for campaign. Mm. But I will also encourage my colleagues uh, mm. to come and share knowledge. Thank you very uh, much. From academia yes. and uh, from politics, yes. because I participate in all those uh, spaces, and even business people. Thank you. I think uh, you have to get more business people Mm. Uh, uh, or those in business administration yes. to come here and talk about how uh, the opportunities for young people can be leashed out there. Because mm. we live in a society where many young people are becoming stressed about the future. Is there a future for them? The future for young people mm. cannot only be defined by government. You need the role of society and uh, you need the role of business. Mm. So let's utilize this uh, podcast uh, 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 platform uh, effectively uh, mm. to build uh, Limpopo, South Africa and make uh, the world a better, a better place to live in. I think our Thanks producer our producer uh, Dr. Mabota will make follow up on that so that you can doctorally discuss this at the PhD level <laughs> on, on, on how you can uh, um, uh, make this platform grow. Uh, I want to thank Mabota Pub Productions Styles and States, my pizza for always taking care of us and making sure that we move well. Thank you for tuning in to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino.